It's the first Monetary Policy Committee meeting for the year. And after two days of deliberations, the central bank governor and members of the committee assess how the nation's economy fared in the last two months, considering happenings at the global market which impacted the economy. The central bank released on a monthly basis the committee observes that inflation and the new variant of COVID-19 and lack of access to vaccines, specifically by emerging economies, is affecting economic growth. There are further growth projections for the year 2022. While the central bank is looking at a growth of 2.8 percent, the federal government and the International Monetary Fund are projecting growth rates of 4.2 percent and 2.7 percent. The committee noted that while the recovery of the global economy in 2021 fell below the initial forecast, final estimates showed considerable improvement over the 2020 outcome and evidence that the global economy was pulling out of the doldrum associated with the pandemic. Consequently, the recovery is gaining momentum with increasing consumer spending, upswing in investments and soaring world merchandise trade above pre-pandemic levels. These reflect the resilience of economic agents in the face of, of new strains of the virus and rising infection rates. The central bank governor then says its intervention across various sectors of the economy to boost business activities which run into billions of naira is yielding results. But this is not without worrisome trends. Again, Mr. Miefile assures of measures put in place by both the monetary and fiscal authorities to address the situation. The issue remains that we see logistical challenges from, in moving food from farm to market, from farm gates to market, and also the activities of hoarders, and we're going to do everything possible to stop this. And after much deliberations, the central bank retained the monetary policy rate at 11.5 percent. Other parameters left unchanged are the cash reserve ratio and liquidity ratio at 27.5 percent and 30 percent. Well, joining us for more on the latest MPC decisions on the news at 10 is Mr. Bismarck Rowane, Chief Executive Officer, Financial Derivatives Company Limited. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Let's begin. The MPC has again left key parameters unchanged. What's your reaction to that decision? The slide says, same old, same old, right? So 25 times out of 28, no Meetings. change. Okay, so, and it's all about inflation. And so, typically, in a high inflationary environment, what you do is to increase interest rates. But they didn't do it this time. Why? Because you've had seven consecutive declines and one uptick is not enough to get a trend. Therefore, it makes sense to wait and see. Uh, but you see, the thing about this is that there was, he mentioned three things. One, the money supply, broad money supply grew from about um, 7.1 or something to 10. There was about a 3% increase in broad money supply. That's one. Two, it was of the view or the committee was of the view that this was temporary and transient inflation. And thirdly, he did say that the harvest was going to push out, push up, increase output, and therefore things will normalize in the next three months. The reality is that <clears throat> it's difficult when you have increased money supply. It's difficult when you have global inflation all over the place, and you can see from one of the slides, that inflation has become ubiquitous. Inflation here, inflation there, inflation, inflation everywhere. So what do we have? In Nigeria, it's 15.63. <clears throat> the U.S. is 7%. In the U.K., it's 5.4%. In South Africa, it's 59 And in Ghana, it's 12.6%. So it's not Nigeria-specific, but the Nigeria inflation is really higher than trend. One. Two, there's a difference between inflation expectations and inflation psychology. Inflation psychology means that you are afraid that your wages are not going to catch up with the price increases. Two, inflation psych expectations are that if prices are going to continue increasing, you begin to buy things to hoard, which leads to some dysfunctional market distortions. Therefore, inflation becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. 
But since it's a global phenomenon, and the answer to it is increasing output, how do you increase output? Like the central bank mentioned, which is output from productivity, technology. But I think there's another answer to it, which is increase the amount of foreign exchange you disperse to the manufacturers. That will increase output. And then that will bring down prices. Because on one hand, you would have sucked some naira out of the system and substituted with goods. And secondly, you've got to start moving. You can't have inflation at 15.63 and interest rates at 3%. It creates a distortion in the allocation of resources. So I think, again, we go back to the components of inflation in Nigeria. Core inflation is up to 13.87. Urban inflation is 16.17. Food inflation is 17.3. And rural inflation is 15.11. When you take month on month of 1.8, which is the inflation between last month and this month, and you annualize it, you get a rate of 24%. That itself can be disturbing. So the reality is that inflation has become a problem which needs to be nicked at the border. So you don't agree that at some point, maybe in the first quarter, it will be moderate? Um, <clears throat> I'm not that optimistic. I think that we will, it will take, I think that inflation will ease and moderate towards the end of the year, but not as soon as, as the that, first that's, quarter. that's pretty optimistic. But one thing is that because the, uh, the expectation, one of the drivers of inflation, people thought that because and there's an increase in the price of fuel, that will drive. But I don't agree with that argument. I think sooner or later we will have to deal with the subsidy issue. It's, uh, it's not politically expedient at this time, but we will have to deal with that at the appropriate time, somewhere down the road. But I think that inflation will ease after spiking all the way to about June. It's also interesting that you mentioned um, the fuel subsidy, um, <coughs> you know, which is now you know, next year. Uh, but there's also the fear of you know, the political season, and many wonder, will this administration be able to concentrate and not be distracted to, um, of course, with regards to the economic policies for the rest well, of the year? They say good economics does not necessarily mean, mean good politics, right? But bad politics leads to bad economics. So the reality is that there's a time for everything. If we miss the opportunity to do what we had to do at the time we had to do it, then that's the price we pay. But you must understand that there are five African countries that are in turbulence in terms of their democracies are being derailed. You don't want to play into that narrative, right? Because as Saul loses, anything is possible. If you make any strategic economic decisions, which you have to do, it could be interpreted from a political prism and be used against you and everything comes down. We can't, Nigeria cannot afford to go down the same path as many of those countries. First of all, we're too large, the stakes are high, and we play a very critical role in the geopolitical stability of the region. Talk to us about the major impact of today's meeting to the Nigerian, the employer, the trader. Well, the truth is that one, interest rates remain artificially low for now, which means that if you are a borrower, low interest rates is better to borrow now than to be a lender. A lender will be repaid in less valuable Naira down the road. Two, so creditors are likely to be worse off. Three, Naira investors will lose value because they think there's better value outside. But fortunately, the stock market is, stock market is moving. And therefore, what employers will be challenged because people are going to ask for higher salaries. But when you now look at the ordinary guy down there, that's the ordinary guys, the bag of rice is still 30,000 Naira. Beans is about 22, 25,000 naira, which is up significantly. Beans, no, beans is about um, 22,000 naira. And Gary is about 15,000 naira. Flour is 22,000 naira. So that tells you what's going to happen to those guys. For the middle class, your school fees is going to be, it's already higher. Everybody knows that as you go back to school. Your rent is higher. <clears throat> your medical bills are higher because drugs are now, the same thing will happen. Flight tickets for those who are going abroad, their flight tickets are more expensive. The, of course, international school fees and medical bills are higher. So, what next? What you need, you need to look up to 
is that the solution, so there'll be another MPC meeting in March. We'll look at that and see what happens. Most likely, there might be an increase. There are going to be political conventions, consensus, primaries, uh, direct and indirect primaries. You'll have some form, but the, there'll be a distraction of policymakers and political office holders away from the main event. But kicking the can down the road doesn't mean that the problem gets solved. The problem only gets worse. Now, the th main thing to do is that if, since this is the end of the life of this administration, people have to look forward to what happens next. The truth is that the response, the political response of instability across the region is more out of economic incompetence and mismanagement. So voters, as you go along, the answer is to make sure that whichever administration comes in must be led by people who have the capacity and the knowledge to make rational and efficient economic decisions. Because a bad economic decision is likely to lead to a wrong political outcome. So, but anyway, right. we are cautiously optimistic that the end by this time next year, we should, all, we should, be, we should be better off. Cautious than we optimism. Are this year. Cautious optimism. Thank you, Mr. Bismarck Chief Executive Officer of Financial Derivatives Company Limited. Thank you for joining us Thank on the you. News at 10. Thank you for having me.